أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون from Allah we came and from Allah we shall return as we deep ourselves deep into the belly of this dunya sometimes we have to reflect look back death your time is up your time is up imagine i want you to imagine yourself at a moment of death what thought comes across your mind is it memories of family and friends is it panic is it full of regret and remorse or the remembers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you've just got to make your choice and your choice depend upon the life that you lead in this world death your time is up what is death well clinical psychologists say death is the cessation of the connection between the subconscious mind and the life that we live what happened to us after we die it's a million dollar question what happened to us after we die what is life hereafter looks like where does our soul goes allahu akbar Now the feeling of crossing over the boundary from this ephemeral world to the next cannot be described in any words in any language nor can it be imagined in the mind but it can be understood only through divine revelation and inspiration death actually is inevitable it is the one thing that we can be certain about in this life allahu akbar we are born to die the holy quran actually captured this scenario where allah said in the quran kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut thumma ilayna turja'un each and every one of us will have the taste of death and eventually we would be gathered to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So it is something that is inevitable. The journey begins in the womb of our mothers. In other words, from womb to tomb. Now our livelihood, our deeds, our date of death, whether it is blessed or cursed, all is recorded. by the angels in the book of deeds so the life that we live on this earth dictate the sort of life that we're going to meet at the other side of the world well actually we have no choice in who our parents are we didn't make that choice we have no choice as to the color of our skin we have no choice as the ethnicity or the nationality that we are from all of this have been computed in the preserved tablet which we call the lawhil mahfuz everything that happens to mankind have been enshrined right now what is, what is happening is you know a video is just been played but everything have been enshrined so when someone begins to die the angel of death as a ra'il come along to take his soul Now that would be the time of regret and nail biting wishing that we will be returned back to the world so that we could do a lot of good things it will happen and Allah will not give us a second chance as the time comes along yawma la yanfa'u ma'lun wa la banuna illa man ata Allah bi qalbi salim Allahu akbar that day la yanfa umarun your wealth will not help you wala banun your children can never help you yawma la yanfa umarun wala banun illa man ata allah bi kalbi salim except the one that comes to allah with a clear beautiful you know uh, spirited hearts and mind we've got to change our life 
What are we going to say when the time comes? فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي لَوْ لَا أَخَرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ عَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَعَصَدَّكَ وَعَقُنْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ After seeing what's going to happen at a time of death, we begin to complain. Oh my Lord, take us back to the world and we would do a lot of good stuff. We would give, we would do this and that. Allah said, there will never be a time allotted to you after what has been given to you in this dunya. So this is the time that we have. We have to make good use of it. The world is telling us to come, come, come. It's beautiful. Everything looks like Hollywood. And we begin to enjoy it. But as you get there, it's sort of like a mirage. And you see the beauty is going away. And you're trying to grab it. It's like a grape, a bunch of grape on top of the tree. You try to grab it, they pull it up. You try to grab it, they pull it up. That is the world. So we should not let this world fool us. Where's your grandmother? Where's your grandfather? Where's your brother? Where's your mom? Where's your friend? Where are your teachers who taught you at school? They're dead. They're gone. They're not coming back. It's a one-way ticket, man. Once you go, you're not coming back. One-way ticket. We don't have to make a jest out of this world. For those who let evil life on earth, the removal of the soul, will be so difficult. So many angels have to work together to beat the face and the flank and the backside of the wicked as you walk on earth. You don't respect nobody. You encroach a lot of people's you know, uh, uh, position, steal from them, milking the nation. In the darkness of the, of the night, you think nobody's watching you. Allah is watching you. And that day, Allah would ask you to read your own book. Allah Allah said that day, read your own book. Read your own book. You are the ultimate witness enough for the life that you live on earth. So we have to exhibit good, beautiful life. Merciful. Be kind, be good. Yes, be good and kind. So if you leave, people will talk good about you. Know that whatever you have, millions of people that have passed the world have got it before you. You know the beginning. You're going to live it. Whatever you have, you're going to live it, man. And somebody else will inherit it. Maybe you would not like the person that's going to inherit it. That means whatever you are working, working so very hard, whatever you possess is going to be inherited by someone that you don't even want to see at the time that you live on earth. But if you succeed by doing good, the grave will be a waiting area for goodness. So strive in doing good as you actually don't have time in this world. We don't have no time at all. Imam Ghazali, he was advising one of the, his students. He said to them, Abdullah bin, Abdullah, uh, bin Umar, let me tell you this. We live in this world for only three days. The first day was yesterday. It's gone. Whatever you do yesterday, you can go back to yesterday and make some arrangement and some changes. It is gone. It's gone forever. That's the first day. It's gone. So whatever you do, you can change it. It has been enshrined in the record book. Imam Ghazali went on to say, the second day is today. But I want you to listen carefully. Today, as you wake up from your bed, up till now, what good thing have you done that if you pass away, you will show it up and it, it will be a source of you entering Jannah? And what guarantee do you have that from now to the time that you go to bed, you would live to see that time? What guarantee do you have that? You don't have that guarantee. So that means half of today is gone. We didn't do nothing to show case, our case in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ghazali continued by saying, the last day, which culminate the three days that you live on earth is tomorrow. <laughs> but tomorrow, you and I cannot delve deep into tomorrow and make some changes. Can we do that? No, because tomorrow belongs to the day. It belongs to the unseen. It belongs to the unseen. So whatever we do, do it today and do it right. Today is all we got. The Prophet wasallam, he said, be in this world as if you are a stranger or someone who's a wayfarer. Because if you are a stranger, you're not going to stay for a long time. And someone who goes to the market is going to eventually go back home. 
be in this world like that. So good. Isa ibn Maryam, the only prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can, you know, establish a fact that he never had a house of his own. See, in my pocket right now, I got a key. If I go home, I'm just going to open the door and enter inside. But this Abu Maryama does not have a home to call his. He have just one cloth on top and he have a girdle, trousers, you know, at the bottom. And then he have a calabash attached to his waist. So when they, uh, 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 there was a time that uh, he went to River Jordan. And he realized that his clothes are dirty. So he took off the top, you know, girdle. He washed it by the River Jordan. When it's dry, he put it on. Then he took the other one that is underneath the trouser type. He washed it, dried it, and he put it on. Then he began to walk into the marketplace. So, but before he went to the marketplace, he stopped at the River Jordan. He felt some test. He wanted to drink some water. He took the kalbash that is by his waist. He get down and, 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 and get some water. As he was about to drink, he saw a man at the other side of the bank using his hand. To collect the water. Isa Bunu Maryam threw the calabash away and he fell down in prostrating, begging Allah to forgive him. Forgive him what? The calabash. That means he's attached to this dunya. Now he's crying because he's a prophet, a messenger of Allah, one of the Ulul Adham, the five you know, prominent prophets. Yet this person that is not a prophet, ordinary person, he's using his hand to drink the water. And I'm using calabash. That means I've attached myself to this dunya so Allah forgive me. Allahu Akbar. On that day, Allah will not ask you, how many clothes do you have? But Allah will ask you, how many people have you clothed? Ya Salam. On that day, Allah will not ask you, how many houses do you have? But Allah will ask you, how many people have you housed? Allah will not ask you, which neighborhood did you live? But Allah will ask you, how did you fare with your neighbors? Allah will not ask you, which tribe do you belong? Allah will not I mean, ask you, look at the color of your skin. But Allah will look at the content of your character. Deeper meaning of what your heart is reporting. Allahu Akbar. Let us all, you know, make a U-turn and change our life for good. Establish Salat. Be kind to your parent, especially. You want Allah to be happy with you? Be good to your parents, man. Don't raise your voice on your parents. They bring you out when you was a baby in the womb. Can you remember when you were in the womb of your mother? Can you remember when you were a spam in the womb of your mother? Can you remember when you became a blood? Can you remember in your womb of your mother when you became a muscle? Can you remember when you was growing deep in the annals of your mother's womb? What did you eat? Whatever your mom eat you steal you become a thief in the womb of your mother you become so big that you can't even come out where do you go to your bedroom in the womb of your mother when it's time for you to come out you become so big your mom go to the doctor the doctor say no we can give birth you know in a natural form i need to take a dagger a knife a cutlass a blade to cut through your mother just because for you and me to come out allahu akbar Let's be good in this dunya. There's no need to do bad stuff. There's no need to be wicked. Be good. Be kind. Smile. Smile, the messenger said. It's charity. Allah will bless you if you smile to your brother. Don't walk on earth showing insolence, man. Puffing up your cheek and raising up your armpit or raising up your, you know, your shoulder. You are nobody, man. Allah does not like an arrogant boaster. Whatever Allah gives you, Allah has given billions of people on earth before he gave you. Yours is a scrap. It's going to go. There's a lot of people that own more than what you got, but where are they right now? They are skeleton deep in the annals of the earth. Eventually, you and I are going to go there. May Allah make it easy for me, make it easy for you. Look for your halal, man. Look for halal. Don't think that Allah is not seeing you. It's going to be a time that you start biting your teeth. Gnashing your teeth and biting your nails and, 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 and hoping that Allah will bring you back. This is just a message, a simple message from a servant of Allah. Let he who listen take heed to it and make a U-turn and change his life. 
خذا بالله التوفيق والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته